So, I have simplified my sandwich for digital coloring. I now have four layers, right? I have white on the bottom. I then have middle gray, just to check it. I'll turn off the middle gray. I have my peanut butter and jelly layers, just my flat color. There it is, everything's filled in. And then I have my black smart object vector layer on top. Nice and clean. And if I ever needed to, I could always just put that smart vector back on because I have the EPS. This is the file that you put into your print folder. This is the file we're using for the coloring book. This EPS vector file just keeps on giving. I can just put it back on. I can enlarge it so it fits. And then anytime I need clean line art, I've got it because we took the time to make that as a vector. And it's so funny. So here's the difference between the RGB black and the black that comes with Illustrator. It's called the 100% CMYK black. And so in order to make it fully black, I just put on a color overlay. But I can also just shift it a little bit to get an offset, even just with flat color. You see how it gives me a little highlight around each of my flat colors. And that's kind of nice. And that's without doing anything except bringing in my line art again, which was here. Right? And everything lined up perfectly. Just bringing in my vector and just moving it up a little bit. So I get that little offset. So I'm going to keep them both in there, but I think I like that offset. Now I point this out because a common student mistake is that if they see something like this, where there's black and there's white within the thing that's colored, they'll think of it as being more than one color. But that's just one color. Black and white are not colors, right? So I brought in my new EPS layer. I don't really need these open anymore, these reference colors. Though, I guess I'll keep one open so you can see some of the duotone colors um, from these examples. But just by shifting my line art a little bit, my EPS vector line art, I'm already giving it some dimension. But this is still just flat color because for each one local thing, like this bush versus this grass, it's just filled in with one tone. In our slides, that is shown this way, right? with the local flat color, whether it's offset line art or not. The next step is to add what's called duotone. So that's adding highlights and shadows. And there is hard edged, sometimes called cut edge uh, duotone. It's sometimes called cell shading. And that's when the division between the, the light and the dark of the local color is really clean. It's like cut out of, of film. And then there's soft edged. And soft edge duotone is where it gradates. So here you have the, the hard edged, and then here you have the softer edged. And you can do that with painting it. You can do it with erasing out with the soft edge brush, all these different versions. Animation usually uses a hard edge because it's easier to match frame to frame, right? And hard edge is kind of traditional for, for mid 20th century illustration because the colors were more limited and the, the colors weren't done by the artist, they were done by like separate colorists that had to do so many different jobs that they just dropped them in into simple shapes. They didn't have time to model out a nose and all of that. Nowadays, because we can do this digitally, Soft edge and hard edged are kind of used together all over the place, right? So if something is reflective, like the visor or her shiny hair, that's going to be more hard edged, do a tone. And where it's so, like a softer texture, like their skin or like the feathers, it's going to be a softer edge, do a tone. 
and sometimes a mix between both. Like just in the feathers, you can see where it's hard edged, where it's soft edged. Just in the sword, you can see where it's more hard edged and soft edged together. So let's learn how to do that. I'm going to move the effect of the color overlay down to my new placement. Oh, it won't let me do that unless I unlock it first. And that's just a color overlay that makes it solid black, right? So the difference between CMYK black and RGB black. And we'll learn more about that in our next assignment when we talk about posters and printing. But this is what we have so far. What's one area I know I'm not that happy with just the solid flat color? It's this green grass. It's just too, too strong. So this is what I like to do. I'm going to duplicate my flat color layer. Command J. Then I'm going to lock my flat color layer so I don't accidentally change it. And on my duplicate, I'm just going to do a really basic thing. I'm going to add shadow tones to everything. To do that, I go to Image, Adjustment, and I change the levels. Not of my line art, just of my flat color duplicate. And I'm going to shift them towards the right, those mid-tones. So I am literally just adding black to every color. If I do it all the way, they, they all turn really dark. So I'll go about halfway. And I'm going to label that layer Duotone Shadows. It's when you take the flat local color and you split it into lights and darks. I might like what the Duotone Shadows do for some of it and not like what it does for the rest of it. And I'm going to modify this by erasing away from it. So these duotone shadows, I can now take my eraser tool, and if I want hard edge duotone, let's say on this side of the clock tower, let's just kind of like it shows you here, let's cut out a shape. It goes on that whole side of the building. So I'm just going to cut this whole wedge out, and then I'm just going to delete it from my duotone shadow, and then deselect. And you can see I now have a cut edge split on the clock tower itself. Maybe I want something like this going across it. I can cut that out. Or on the bricks. different highlight shapes. Working inside and around the bricks. Travel up through the line art. And I can delete it out and hit deselect. Now this is not modifying my original flat color. My original flat color is still there. It's simply deciding on shadow shapes within it. Now with this grass that I thought was problematic, where do I want the highlights to come through? Maybe on this bottom edge. And even though this is cut edge, I can make it a little wavier and wonkier and then just delete, right? Maybe back here, I even go a little stronger with one big shape. And this is what I love about this technique. Instead of having to color each thing individually, it automatically will vary all those tones with what's underneath. If I want to change that a little bit, I can customize it more. This was my lasso. So I like to do cut edge with my lasso just because it's really, really deliberate. And you can always take it back. This will work particularly well in these windows, right? Just like it shows in these examples. I can kind of cut out these bars of highlight going through the window. 
And right now it's pretty subtle because it's just flat color and shadows. I don't have anything brighter than my flat colors yet. I can do that next. But oh, I like, I like that little effect in the glass. That is nice. And sometimes you want your coloring simple, sometimes you want it more complicated. These are just ways to play with it. Little highlights on all of these pieces of shrubbery. I just delete out where I think there should be highlights from my duotone shadow layer. Now I said I would show you hard edge and soft edge. But I like to always start with hard edge because in digital art, it's a lot easier to soften a hard edge than it is to harden a soft edge, right? So this gives you something very defined, like an animation, that's easy to modify, easy to know where it starts and stops. But it can be tricky because it feels so abrupt. And so that's why I don't change my actual flat color layer. I lock that. I do this on a duplicate to experiment with where highlights could be. And then I can always soften them later very easily. It's so easy to soften hard edges in Photoshop and see what it will look like on another duplicate with soft edge. It also shows me, and this always happens with illustrations of any complexity, that there are things I still didn't pick a good color for. But I'll get to it. And again, we're not going for absolute perfection here. So if you slip a little, this is just the coloring. That's fine. It's to be expected. Be forgiving. And this all helps us with, with digital painting and color selection and all the different variations we can make with layers coming up. I can even just cut out kind of my own organic shapes in these bushes, even though they're not inked at all, to help those textures. On the butterfly, it's going to do some wavy highlight shapes for the translucence of the wing. Remember with the lasso, you can always hold down shift to add to it. You can hold down option to subtract. But that nice kind of waviness is going to go over the flat colors I've chosen and we'll just make it a little bit more dynamic. On this building, let's see through these windows, big kind of Z's, cut those out. You can hold down shift and do multiple shapes to cut out all at once. You want something to look metallic, Good to have strong core highlights next to strong core shadows. Remember, we're only modifying from the duplicate of our flat color. So if anything doesn't work, we can always get back to our flat color, no problem.
I'm just 